Alright, so I got a question for you. What exactly does it mean to find your own sound? And how do you find it? Well, if you don't know, I'm gonna get into it in this video. Disclaimer though, this is not gonna be a tutorial. I know, I know, boo this nigga off the stage, but I feel like this video is gonna help you change your mindset and make you think about things a lot differently. So to compensate for it not being a tutorial, here's a funny video. All right, all right, all right. So now that you got that, now we can get into the video. Lately, I've been watching a lot of concert performances from festivals. I was watching Rolling Loud. I couldn't help but notice a lot of people sound the same and a lot of the music that they're playing sounds the same. And if you looked at the crowd, a lot of people were silent. And then for some artists, they were like super hyped. Now, the other day I was watching Lollapalooza, right? I had never been to Lollapalooza. I thought about going this year, but you know, Delta Berry. Wasn't really trying to do that, but I was watching Tyler the Creator's performance and I was thinking like, damn, we'll never really get another Tyler the Creator ever. And I started thinking, I will be cool with that. I don't think anybody can really do what he does. And then I started thinking deeper, like, what is it that makes these artists stand out more than others? Like, how do you find your own sound? So that really kind of inspired this video. Now, many of you probably have heard the T-Pain rant where he was like, fucking do something else. God damn it. Do some different music. I kind of feel him on that. The thing though is it was getting shared a lot. I told they be shit on my son crap. And it was a topic of discussion for a couple days. Which means the consumers, the people that don't make music, the people that listen to music are no longer excited about the releases that's happening. I mean a lot of people were saying like this shit sounds the same, it's whack, and you can tell the excitement is gone. Even on a personal front for me, I don't get that same feeling that I got when I was at Black Friday and I went to go pick up the Kanye West My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album. That was the first album I ever bought. I was like super geeked about that. And lately, I know we transitioned to the streaming era, but I feel like we don't really get excited about music that way, unless it's like from like those artists that are already proven. Kanye West, Kendrick, like we don't know when he's gonna drop, but we just know when he does, it's gonna be shit. Like people are anticipating Utopia by Travis Scott, Certified Lover Boy by Drake, J. Cole's next project, even though he just released a really fire project, SZA's next project. These artists are like proven. And I started thinking like, you know, since our job as producers and even engineers are to help artists create their sound, we have to create the sound. It's already a known fact that a lot of industry producers, at one point in time, they were getting their sauce from internet producers because internet producers have more freedom to create a whole nother sound and put out the music at a rapid rate as opposed to the whole chain system uh, you got to go through with a label so when something really like blew up that's when people were like okay that's the sound right there we're gonna run with that all right so now that i give you guys some context i could give you guys the problem right i feel like it's really two issues and when i talk about these issues i'm talking about it from a producer or engineer standpoint uh, i feel like the first issue on a producer front is people are overloaded with way too much and they're overwhelmed with way too much and then the second thing is there's no self-awareness let me explain now every generation faces a challenge with every challenge there's always a new advancement in technology and then that technology kind of shapes that whole era uh, with the genres they create for example in the 60s and 70s once synthesizers were introduced you started seeing a lot more genres and a lot more advancement people like the doors were creating psychedelic music quincy jones was using it and then he was like using it but with choirs and orchestras and stuff to make it sound even bigger in the 80s a lot of inner city kids didn't feel like they had music that really reflected them and their lifestyle so they started using what they can get their hands on stuff like the tr 808 or 909 and then they started creating music on that and that's what we know now that's where a lot of the 808s come from or in the 90s when people that weren't musically inclined but they had the ear for it so they started using samplers and sampling old records and then kind of putting a modern day twist on it they started using akai npcs uh asr 10s all types of stuff early 2000s a lot of producers didn't have the money to be able to spend like a hundred thousand on a ton of just studio gear but they had computers so they started creating programs to be able to make music on them i hope you're seeing a trend with every challenge there's an advancement right now in the digital era we have so much choices so much shit to choose from i mean everybody's creating a new drum kit every day practically new plugins new resources new sounds all of that stuff and it's so easy to get overwhelmed a lot of sample makers are going back to using analog because of the limitations 
because not only does this feel good, but you're not doing too much, you're not overthinking. I know what you're probably thinking. Fam, you just gave us a ton of shit. What does this have to do with finding your own sound? I feel like it has everything to do with finding your own sound. And I kind of boil it down to like these five things. I'll run through them real quick. When you put your 10,000 hours in, or you talk to other people, or you watch interviews of your favorites, you'll realize a lot of them kind of say the same thing within the same ballpark. So I'm just pretty much giving you the common denominator of just experience as well as conversations and learning from people so the first thing is limitations i feel like you should embrace limitations a lot more limitations help you be more creative i mean i just gave you a whole example of different time periods where they had limitations and they got creative with it but if you don't believe me i'll give you two examples of two major producers that used fl and they applied limitations to what they do the first one is ninth wonder he made like some of the destiny child records on fl studio he didn't say oh i don't have an npc I'm not a real sampler. I'm not a real producer because I don't have the equipment they have. Yeah, that's what I use. I mean, no secret. I didn't use it just because I try to be cool. I use it because I can afford the MP. Ain't no man. I just want to make beat. No, he had a laptop and he was making 30 by Thursday. That's what he used to call it. Where he made like 30 beats before Thursday. It, it was some wild shit, but hey. He went crazy. <laughs> or the second one. Boy Wanda made Best I Ever Had sampling. He didn't say like, oh damn, I don't have this equipment that all these other producers have. No, he had a terrible shitty laptop and he just got to work. See, the limitations are what make you creative, not the equipment. There's this guy named Massimo Vigit whatever it's, i put it up here right this is on the design front he's one of the most notorious designers he did the american airlines logo and design he did the whole map for the new york train system this is a pretty big deal he only uses six fonts i mean he's even quoted saying all you need is six everything else throw away and if you can't get it done with six fonts then you're thinking too much you need to go back to the drawing board so the second thing is create playlists of the songs that give you that feeling and immerse yourself in it one of the things that i was watching at cheesecake factory the other night Night was uh the verses with dipset and locks and i was just like oh. you know at the dinner table i'm like oh shit oh. unfortunately dipset disappointed me the niggas really got washed bro i'm so salty about that <laughs> I was listening to it and I'm like, damn, we don't have no records that feel like this. Now, I'm not trying to sound like an old nigga or anything like that, but if you watch like some of the streams I do, I always like just, I'm, I'm like, I have a hard on for feeling, pause. It's because that's your guidance system. Like if it feel good, nothing. And I mean, no technicality, no fucking music theory or none of that shit really matters because it feels good sounds good we rolling what better way than to get that feeling than to create a playlist and then just like start creating off of what you're inspired by your inspirations are you you just don't know it in time you'll come around the third thing to build your own sound i feel like you guys should go to more concerts and more parties i know in the grind culture a lot of people are like yo you gotta you grind, grind, you gotta, gotta do all this other extra, extra shit, shit. bruh. On some real shit, go and live life. Because staying at the computer and just like making stuff all day or just being in the studio and just cooking up all day, that's not real life, fam. You'll be stressed out, you'll have beat block, you'll be pretty much out the loop of what people like and what's going on. I tell people this all the time, like I used to be, when I first like really got serious and I was like, I, I love this music thing, I wanna do this shit. I would go to the most dangerous parts in Chicago at house parties and just be there, not even dancing but just like listening to what people like paying attention to the crowd this is around the time when like mercy came out this is when like cruel summer take care the weekend started dropping like all this type of shit and i was young i was super young but i was in there it's some violent times but honestly i wouldn't trade it for anything else because that made me think about music in a totally different way especially when i don't like drop oh my god that was some of the craziest shit ever nigga i feel like concerts give you more representation of what people want to hear i highly recommend you go after i went to the astroworld concert my mindset was yo keep everything simple because i see why people are jumping up and down to this shit the fourth one is experiment 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 listen you're not really going to be able to find your sound until you stumble on some accidents i personally feel like if you keep it 75 25 you'll really be able to find a cool balance so that way it's not too much 75 of course being stuff that you know people already kind of recognize and then 25 percent being experimental i'm not saying you can't get creative i'm just 
saying when you go outside the concerts you start listening to the music you'll realize okay even though the sound selection is weird and people are using guitar pedals and shit like that right there's a certain simplicity to it that people kind of they recognize and they're kind of their ear is like oh shit okay i can bop to this and the fifth thing i feel like people should collaborate more man if you don't collaborate like you only really hurting yourself honestly and loops are a form of collaboration you should always really be looking to collaborate because making music alone is boring as shit i could tell you myself it's super boring so that's why i use more loops than anything and then even on top of that like why i'm traveling so much now like i gotta go to atlanta uh in about ooh, in about 15 days so i got a lot to do and a lot more videos to make so when i'm out there i can have fun collaborate go to events and you know what i'm saying really live i'm trying to be like lou will and go to magic city and eat some lemon pepper wings you know what i'm saying <laughs> So, you know, collaborate more, fam. People have a different perspective and you can't really feel like you know it all. Collaboration, that's the key. And it's really those five things. Like, I know people are thinking like, oh man, I thought you were going to give us some sauce and all this other shit, but it's really a mindset shift. That's the real sauce. Limitations, uh, going to concerts, immersing yourself in it, experimenting, collaborating more. That's really the sauce. It's all a mindset shift because if you're stuck in a mindset where you're making the same shit over and over again, you know, where's their growth? Where is there the new thing that's gonna set you apart? There's a reason why people copy Pierre Bourne. He has his own style. He doesn't try to do anything else. He does his thing because he likes it and those are his influences. And when he goes to concerts, he likes to hear that type of music. So nobody can really outdo his sound better than him. It's just fact. It doesn't matter how musical you are. It's like, I just know this shit's saucy because this is the feeling I get from it. And I'm trying to give people that. So take it, run with it. I hope this video isn't too long. I was actually filming this talking for a minute, but I don't know, man. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help, you know? Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you fuck with the video. I don't know if this is gonna get like a ton of likes or watches or views or whatever, but if you watch this, I appreciate you. I have a fun video coming out soon. You guys are gonna be a part of it. Pay attention to the community tab. I'll drop a link and you guys will finish it for me. That's all I can give. So with that being said, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.